Hi everyone, it's Rosanna. Um, I have an idea for a little make long today. I originally had a different idea and then I, <laughs> I started filming that and then I started filming just a get to know me video and then I had this idea last night because it's my daughter's birthday week and um, these are a little kind of like cake toppers that I made probably four years ago and I'd like to revisit that because these are made with like homemade paper clay and they're cute they're kind of wonky folk arty um, but I thought let's do those in spun cotton today because there's a lot of ways you can go with something this simple and small um, it doesn't take much of anything and um, I, I can imagine like you know if you had an afternoon or even a day um, you could end up making a ton of these even if you wanted to do one for each cupcake at a party and that could be kind of a favor or what you know that someone gets to take home so I thought that would be a cool thing to do so um, we'll probably do a bunny and a cat and maybe a mouse because I've had some requests I get a lot of requests to make um, cats and rabbits and I just had one for um, a mouse and we will tr I'll try to get to those kind of a more um, uh, elaborate or <laughs> um, full you know the full animal rather than just the little head part but this is a good place to start because honestly cats and mice um, are not the easiest animal to make which is why we've done chickens and easier things um, but anyway, so this is what we're going to um, make today, just kind of some different versions of this, and I'll show you um, the kind of materials that you need, and we'll get going. And, um, what I'm going to do is, I have a hard time talking loud enough um, when I'm just talking and filming. I think that the audio is a little too quiet, and when I try to talk louder, my voice just sounds strained and um, awkward. So. I will probably talk for this first little part where I'm taking you through our materials um, that we need and then I'll probably just film um, and do voiceover for the actual making part because I just think it's easier to listen to and um, and the, the volume is better. So um, the first things we're going to um, need are whatever kind of stick or skewer you're going to use for your um, little topper cake or cupcake topper. I had some longer bamboo skewers um, that I cut in half which I think are kind of um, probably the ideal thing because they're not as clunky um, and um, they're longer so you can use them um, for a cake or you can cut them down but I think you could do um, toothpicks if you were making them for um, cupcakes so that's a possibility I also thought straws would work um, fine. You might have to scale up the size of the head a little bit, um, but yeah, straws would work. Um, and probably you guys are gonna have a bunch of ideas that just didn't pop it. Oh, twigs, which I didn't bring in any little twigs from outside, but that definitely would work. Go out and cut a little twig or pick up a twig and rinse it off a little bit. Um, or popsicle sticks. Um, so I'm sure I'm forgetting like lots of other um, simple kind of things that will present themselves to you but those are those are just kind of some options I thought of and then um, we might use a tiny bit of foil to wrap around um, our stick to start the head and then we'll start covering it with cotton and for cotton I've just got my standard um, cotton balls like from the drugstore I'm out of like sometimes I use cotton out of like vitamin bottles or whatever I'm out of that right now and then I have um, two different kinds of old quilt batting and they are both pretty full of like um, cotton plant vegetable matter or whatever you would call that like it's got little pieces of the plant in it so it's pretty rough stuff but I don't mind that kind of rustic look um, some of this I took out of like a, a settee that I took apart and other stuff I've just found at the thrift store so that's what I use for cotton. Um, then I've just got my Elmer's school glue, PVA glue, whatever you call it where you are. And I have about a tablespoon of that mixed with, I do usually one part to three or four parts water. So 
there might be a quarter cup of water in here, I would say, with my glue. Um, I have coffee here, like always, acrylic paints. Um, I do use a little bit of acrylic paint usually, but um, I do most of the color with watercolor. Um, so it's kind of, you can see when we get to painting and um, see what you want to try. And then, um, like the cake pops are fine to stand on their own, but I do make little um, banners to kind of tie on them and so it could you know you could make a banner that says anything like someone's name or a happy birthday banner if you wanted it to be longer or um, I thought today we would make one that says eat cake so um, so for that we're just gonna need little pieces of fabric and I'll show you my kind of stack of fabrics I pulled and you if you have a typewriter you can type out letters or you can go through um, a book that you have and cut out individual letters for whatever your message would say on your little um, bunting or banner. And then I have over here, I have a stack of little um, trims and different fabrics that I pulled that I thought would look good um, as a little ruff, the ruffled neck type thing that we're, or collar that you're going to put around the head. So I just have some old ribbons and crocheted lace, some hankies, um, aprons and doll dresses, and then just little fabric straps. So that would all be handy for the little ruffled collar and for your little um, flag bunting. Okay, so let me think. Um, oh, and then I use a paintbrush, obviously, for, I use it for actually applying the cotton, but um, you're also going to need a couple paintbrushes for painting. So I think that's that's the materials I'm, th oh, um, hot glue is handy for putting on the collar, um, but you could, you could definitely glue it and you could even sew it in a pinch. So, um, I think that is pretty comprehensive list of materials, scissors, of course, um, and I have a little bit of just kind of plain fabric here that we might use, um, for ears. So. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> that was some peppy music for our materials, and now um, you get to watch me wrap tiny bits of chocolate wrapper around a stick for a few minutes, so that's a good contrast. Um, I'm just taking little bits of foil that I've saved from around chocolate bars. Um, that's my favorite thing to reuse for the base of most of what I make that's spun cotton and I'm just making little head shapes um, they don't have to be very specific like you could even make something and not even know what animal you are going for unless you're doing something like an elephant um, it can just be kind of a little blob and um, this is going to be a cat and a bunny and I don't know that I necess I suppose I knew which one I thought would be which, but um, they're pretty close to the same. And then I'm doing a little smaller one on a toothpick that will be a mouse. Um, so I mean, yeah, you can be you can kind of shape it to the basic shape that you want, but it doesn't have to be. You can do most of the work with the cotton. And then I did forget to talk about masking tape when I talked through the materials, um, which I don't know why I always forget masking tape because I use it for pretty much everything. But I am going to go ahead and tape the little foil ball on a little bit because it was popping, just sliding off. Um, so you could either put like a dab if you have a hot glue gun. I would say it might be easier to just dab a little hot glue on there and then wrap your foil around to just give it that little adhesion initially um, and then it won't pop off for you. It, that would be a faster way um, than going back and putting on masking tape afterwards, but I didn't, not everyone always has a hot glue gun. Um, so if you don't use some sort of tape to just kind of make sure that it stays on your stick because otherwise it kind of slides it'll twist around or it'll actually just pop off. 
I'm not sure. I was trying to think if there was some other way to keep the foil on besides tape and glue, and those are the things that are coming to me. If you have actual, um, like, longer cotton fibers, then you can just actually wrap your shape, um, and you won't necessarily need to start with foil, but I, I just always do. Um, I think that's simpler for most people, probably. So yeah, I'm just covering a bit of the foil. Um, but like I've said in past make-alongs, um, while I usually do cover most of the foil, it's not absolutely necessary. I've got six shapes that I've done, um, little bases. And I showed you the cat and the rabbit already. I made two little starts of mice and then I've got a donkey and a pig started. Um, and now I'm gonna show you different ways to do the ears. So the first one that I'm doing is going to be a donkey, I think. And I'm going to show you how to use tape. Um, <laughs> it's always, when I hear you watch these, I'm, always sad when I've got my hands out of frame. I think they come back in frame a little bit more <laughs> to show you. Um, but basically I just take a piece of masking tape and um, you can either take a longer piece and like stick it to one side of the head and then fold it over and stick it down to the back. Or you can take two smaller pieces and you know stick the sticky sides to each other and then you just trim the ear to the shape that you want. Um, always um, keep in mind that the ear will be bigger after the cotton's around it, so you can start a little small. Um, and then on this side, yeah, I think the first side I did two small pieces and just stuck them to each other, and this one I did a longer piece that I, oh, that piece wasn't long enough. I took a longer piece and folded it over There's my hands in the frame. Makes it easier for you to see. So just fold it over, stick it to the back side. This may not be um, the easiest thing to get right. If you haven't done it before, you might have to try a couple times. But for me, um, tape works well for rabbits and donkey ears. Um, I use it for pig ears, um, anything that's a little larger ear. Now for the cat, I will just shape it with cotton and I'll show you how to do the pig's ears. I'm going to do some fabric for that, but there's our little donkey shape ready to go. Um, I'll do fabric. I didn't find that fabric was any easier than tape really but it's an option if you don't have tape and then it's also an option I covered the fabric with cotton fiber and you'll see that later on but I mean if you have um, fabric that you think looks okay just as it is you could also just do the ears that way just you know um, glue them down either with hot glue, like I'm starting just here with a little dab of hot glue to stick it down, but you can also just hold the piece of fabric and put the cotton over it and let it dry that way obviously and then just paint the fabric and have it that way. So there's a lot of options, um, but I'm just, I'm going to try covering the fabric this time. Um, yeah, and like I said, this is a pig, so I mean, pig ears are all kinds of ways. Um, these I did kind of pointing forward and a little bit floppy, but some ears are perky and smaller. And I mean, I don't know, pigs have all kinds of ears. So um, I don't know what animals you will do, but um, you know, don't stress over the ears because usually um, things turn out looking okay, <laughs> like I did. Um, for my bunny this time, one of the ears just didn't want to stand up, so I just gave it a crooked ear, and it looks fine. So just that. The important thing is not to stress too much over <clears throat> any one little part of it, and just let it happen, and if something isn't um, going exactly like you wanted it to do, um, 
that's okay. Let it go. Move on to another, you know, even move on to another um, little shape and just let that one go for a while. Okay, so this is the bunny. I also did fabric for the bunny's ears. Um, but like I said, I or maybe I didn't say already, but I think I typically either... I rarely have used fabric in the past for the ears. I typically um, do the tape method or just shape the cotton. Um, but here you can see instead of hot gluing the ear down, I just um, held the fabric in place. I mean, I cut it with a little extra length and then I'm just covering it with cotton. All right, so I've sped up my film a little bit here um, so that we can get through all of this. Um, what I do when I start with the cotton is I usually just put a tiny little layer of the glue wash onto my foil or taped um, base or armature. And then I just start laying thin layers of cotton over it and um, kind of just, I just use my paintbrush to press the cotton down into the watery glue. And like with this um, fabric ear, I'm just holding that against my little head base and um, putting small amounts of cotton over the end of, I cut it a little long so that I would have an end that I could cover to attach it. And then I'm just going around and adding more cotton and getting my first um, layer of cotton on the actual head itself. And um, as you go, you can just fill out the shape the way you want it and um, start giving it more definition and um, bulking it out. And I will, so I'll go around these ears a little bit and make sure that they're stuck down pretty well. And then you can see I'm taking small, small amounts of my cotton fiber and kind of just painting it over the fabric that I'm using for the ear. Um, I think I'll bring my hands back down so that you can see. Um, yeah. So I'm just, I try to keep ears um, as thin as I can, unless it's some animal that has kind of a thicker ear. But you know, with rabbits, really, if you left it just the fabric, that would probably be. Um, I don't know, a little bit more realistic in a way if the texture was close enough because you know how transparent like a cottontail's ears are. You can almost like, you know, if they're sitting in the light, you can almost see through them and see the veins and stuff. So um, I try to keep my ears fairly thin. Um, but like I said, <laughs> or like I always say, um, I tend to kind of fall into mimicking just reality. Um, which isn't necessarily always the most creative thing. So um, don't get kind of hung up on just making it as realistic as possible. I, you know, one of my friends just for our, um, for a fundraiser sale, art sale recently, made a really darling spun cotton bunny, and um, it wasn't realistic at all. Obviously, um, it was really a caricature type type of thing, and had really giant. Um, big chunky ears which is really cool because um, that's what gives a piece interest and sets it apart from others so uh, don't be you know if you're just having trouble making something fine and delicate maybe don't go for fine and delicate go for whatever you do well if you do quirky if you do colorful whatever it is like play to your strengths so and don't get hung up um, on whatever you've seen someone else do or even necessarily on what you wish you could do just just do what you can do um, you know and what you know you do pretty well and and just try to be okay with that other people are always going to do um, whatever it is there's always always someone and usually many many people who do something better than than you do and than I do and that's just that's just life you know there's billions of us here um, and it's okay that we are not the best we all still have something to contribute so um, don't get discouraged whatever you make is you know is really valuable if only just for the experience of making it 
Um, but also I do think, you know, I find things that, um, from my grandma or whoever, a relative that I don't even know that well, and it might not be a piece of art, but it's just a recipe that they've copied out and made changes to. Everything that we create has value to people who come after, I think. So um, here, here I'm not um, talking about what I'm doing very well. I am doing, I'm working on a cat. And um, you see that with the cat I said and with other animals that have fairly small ears, I don't usually um, do anything except just use the cotton to shape them. And so I've got my cat hair started and um, it looks almost like a bobcat at this point because when I shape the ears um, of cats, I usually go a little big and then I trim them down to the shape that I want. Um, so I just let them be pretty rough and big and I, all I do is I try to get kind of the basic, <laughs> the basic shape and kind of thickness or thinness that I want. I want them sh um, usually facing a certain direction so that's what I'm looking at when I'm doing cat ears and then I just try to get them fairly thin um, and kind of cupped the way a cat's ears are. Although I would not claim to be um, great at cats. But anyway, there's the start of my cat. And I'll come back and do, you know, a little bit more cotton filling in and shape the ears a bit more. Um, but I'll show you that in a little bit where we just come back. And um, I think with the cat, I'm going to show you how I do the last, like, layer of cotton with my paint rather than another glue wash. I just... Um, use my acrylic paint to paint it on so that's always um, an option and it gives a little bit different effect with the paint so um, I don't know that it comes through on camera but I'll show you how I do that. There's Kitty. So now I'm going to work on a mouse. I do two mice but I'm just going to show you how to do one and I'm using a cotton ball for this so you'll see kind of the difference between when I use this kind of rustic older quilt batting that I've been using um, that I used for the rabbit and cat that is pretty nubby and it has kind of bigger balls and chunks that aren't as smooth and the cotton ball is smoother um, and really easier to work with probably the only thing I don't like about cotton balls is they um, add a little brightness underneath as you paint like um, the the batting is just kind of a neutral color that I like and that covers well and, and lends itself well to kind of an, an antique paint um, finish. The white cotton balls are definitely smoother and are nicer that way, but the um, tone of them kind of, um, it kind of messes with, I guess, the colors that I'm usually looking for. Um, for the finish so that's all I would say about using cotton balls but I, I use both um, and like them for different reasons um, so here's our little mouse that is on a toothpick um, I find mice fairly easy because there's just not much to the face the hardest part of making a mouse is always going to be the tail that's the fiddliest thing to get kind of thin and um, and have it stick and so obviously we're avoiding that with this project um we're avoiding all the fiddly parts because um legs and and hands or feet or whatever you would like for any animal are always a lot more complicated so it's pretty easy to pinch out little mouse ears and get a basic shape for a mouse head and um one thing i want to mention and i always get questions about are dry times um yeah it, spun cotton can take a long time to dry if your layer of cotton is pretty thick like if you really put like I I guess I would say I'm trying to think um, how thick the cotton would typically be that I'm spreading on and I would say it's not usually more than an eighth of an inch or a couple millimeters probably for any one coat and my biggest um, layer of cotton is always the beginning but like for these mice it wouldn't even be that much now if you if your armature just isn't um, or your shape that you start with isn't that exact and you end up having to add a lot more cotton than that 
then yeah. And you're not using any sort of means to speed up the dry time and you're just leaving it out and it might be summer and more humid in your house, um, then that's going to take longer. Let me just, <laughs> since I've got a new clip here, um, I'm just going to trim this rabbit's ears because kind of like with the cat, I made the ears a little bit bigger than what I knew I would want them um, ultimately. So I just trim them a tiny bit with my scissors and then I'm coming in here with my second coat of cotton on the bunny. Um, and so anyway, what I'm saying is it can take several days if you had a very thick layer of cotton to start with. My tricks are to lay things on heating vents or if you have had the oven warmed up and using your oven, um, once it's turned off, go ahead and um, put your little cotton thing on a little plate or whatever and pop it in there and just let it sit in there forever, you know, for an hour or two. Um, and it sh that for me, an hour in an oven that's just been on is enough time to dry pretty much anything that I make. Um, but like I said, my layers of cotton usually aren't super thick. Um, someone said, and I suppose this would depend on how your dryer and thing is set up, but she sets her things in front of wherever her dryer vents, which I thought was a cool idea. Mine vents outside, but that could work. I have another friend um, who uses a blow dryer sometimes because she's actually an artist and she, you know, is making things, um, trying to be efficient and get things done as fast as she can. So I don't know that she uses the blow dryer necessarily for drying, like, the cotton so much as, like, drying paint in between um, coats of paint. There's little bunny with its second layer of cotton. And then I'm going to show you, so you don't necessarily, in the past I think I've said, you know, like make sure it's dry and then we'll go on to painting. Well, in the last year or so, um, I've tried different things with, with that. And I am tending for most things to paint, especially I would say little animals. Um, to paint while that last layer of cotton is still wet because I like the effect that it gives. And what it does is it just um, blends nicer, I would say, and you get a little bit more natural effect. But again, like <laughs> this is all just your preference. Um, there's not like, there's not a right way to do this. There isn't a wrong way to do it. Just um, like the bunny I showed you earlier that my friend made, that would be kind of an opaque painting job, which I think looks awesome and I love it. I don't really do that myself. Um, I don't know why. Maybe I'm intimidated by that. It's not, a, I'm, I started painting with watercolors so that I kind of just, maybe I'm just afraid of um, a commitment <laughs> to an opaque paint. But anyway, um, just try different ways and see what, what feels good for you. Now on this bunny, what I've done is I've taken my favorite kind of parchment color of craft paint. It's just like a $2 tube of paint from whatever store, but I'm sure you could find it on Amazon. And I'm pretty sure the color is parchment and it's like folk art brand, I think is what it's called. And I've just done a really thin watery layer of that onto the bunny while it's still wet from applying my second layer of cotton. So the paint absorbs in and doesn't necessarily just sit on top, it goes into the fiber. And then I'm just using coffee for the brown part. And you can see it starts out looking fairly light. Um, and I so I did a couple kind of coats of the coffee. And then I'm just coming in with a little pink um, for cheeks and ears. And I've, I have people ask always if I can do really close-ups. Um, or really close up specific stuff uh, with the painting so they can see just how I do it. Um, there's a couple reasons I don't do that. One is that I don't, I wish I had someone helping me film things, but since I'm doing it myself, it's hard to get um, a good shot. And the second reason I don't do that is because I don't think of these as kind of crafting tutorials. So I'm not necessarily thinking that everyone's going to make a bunny that looks just like this. I'm hoping this is just a jumping off point for you. 
and um, that you will kind of do <laughs> go your own direction and not feel like yours has to turn out like mine. Um, I just talked through <laughs> where I showed you how the bunny came out of the oven when he was dry. Um, and you can see that when you paint onto um, wet cotton, you need to kind of take into account that the paint will be quite a bit darker when it comes out of the oven. So that coffee wash that I used is significantly darker, I would say, when it comes out and is dry um, than what it looks like when it goes on. Now with the cat, rather than doing a glue wash and cotton, like for the second layer of cotton, I'm just using my watery acrylic paint. And I just, what I do is I just dip paint out of my cap, dip it in my glue wash. I don't necessarily get any glue on, but I just get water on the brush. And then I just paint on thin bits of cotton. And so that um, usually gives just a more um, open fibery look. And I don't know, I, I like to do that if it works out for my time. And now this, <laughs> this is, sorry, I left this in um, because it was kind of hard to cut there. But anyway, that was my cat, um, like trying to climb the tripod and knocking my phone upside down. So that was little butterscotch and he didn't actually make it onto camera for that, but that was his contribution. Um, so anyway, I'm just painting and smoothing out with a little extra cotton. And now I'm going to make this a pink kitty. Um, and I don't know. I, th I liked the idea of a pink kitty. Um, I'm not sure that I was like completely happy with how its face turned out and even the color turned out. But um, I went with it. When I paint while I'm filming, I just um, I try to just keep going. Um, if I had not been kind of doing this um, and filming at the same time, I might have gone back at a certain point and just added a little bit more cotton and started over with <laughs> with my base coat of paint. But anyway, um, you'll see how it turns. It's, it's fine. Uh, I like the kitty fine. It's just probably not like my absolute favorite thing I've done, which is just part of doing stuff. There can only be one absolute favorite thing you've ever done, and that will continue to change. <laughs> so anyway, um, just adding a little bit of pink over my um, base coat. And this is watercolor, obviously. You can see back here. I, um, I work with watercolors for most of the colors, or coffee if it's brown. And you can see I'm even adding coffee into my watercolor to dingy it up because I um, am enjoying the dingy look right now. And like with the bunny, this doesn't look very, like you can't see the color very well at this point, but it actually came out of the oven and surprised me how dark it was. So that's just my um, one kind of, um, I don't know, warning isn't right, but just like kind of be aware of that when you are painting a figure or a cotton thing that is pretty wet or even soaking wet is it's going to come out way darker than while you're painting it. So here the kitty head has dried a little bit. Um, I wouldn't say it's completely dry, but it's dry enough that when I go in to do um, accents and eyes and things the paint isn't just gonna bleed everywhere um, someone asked oh here let me just talk about what happened here um, I you see how I, I keep my watercolor just on a plate and it's pretty um, casual <laughs> but anyway I must have hit a little spot of blue that was mixed in with my reds and so you see that instead of adding darker pink stripes I added blue there so um, I'm just going back and sort of, I didn't like end up completely covering it or even like repainting there. I just, I put a little white over the top to kind of mask it a little bit and then went back in with my stripes. Um, I don't think it looks bad to have um, some different kind of, I mean, some people do like um, underpainting um, to give it more of an antique -y look, um, which I, I've tried a little bit, but I don't 
do like I typically don't do that for most things but anyway and then I'm just adding I usually or almost always add a little white where I'm going to put the eyes um, just so that the eyes are highlighted a little bit and then you can go back after you're done and if you didn't get enough white underneath you can add a little um, outline of white around them if you need to to just kind of set them off. I didn't include the video. I took video for the cat's eyes, painting the cat's eyes, but it was a really long process because those eyes really fought me, um, which I thought might have been good to show, but this video is already a lot longer than I'm trying to keep it under an hour. So um, it, I just d decided not to include that. Um, although maybe it would be okay to just do as like a standalone short clip to kind of show when you're struggling with with something um, what you can do. Um, but anyway, I'm trying, people always ask for like more of a close-up of the painting of details, so I'm trying my best. It is really hard um, to know if I'm getting things um, like in focus, and it's very difficult, I find, to paint on camera because I'm trying to watch the camera and um, my little you know what I'm doing and I end up not doing a great job with the painting but I'm what I tried to do with um, the eyes for the rabbit and the cat and the mouse which are what I'm focusing on for this is just make them pretty simple um, the rabbit I would normally do like several colors in its eyes and it would be a little bit more um, involved in this, but I'm just doing black acrylic paint with a fine, like a zero point brush or whatever. Um, you can use a toothpick. I've done that in the past when I didn't have a fine tipped brush. Um, so just dab a little paint on the end of your toothpick and I think you can do a pretty decent job with that. And then the other option is a pen, any sort of, um, artist pen if you have one um, would work you know or even a sharpie really although I sharpies are always a little bit um, bluish I would say bluish black and so that's not my favorite um, but you could do that in a pinch and then you know if you just really have trouble making like a more detailed eye it's always pretty cute I think to just do a tiny black dot just like really undersize the eye just make it like the most naive simplistic little dot and that can be really effective too but um, anyway I'm just um, I'll show you how to do the, the mouse's eyes too but I always add a little few dots of um, kind of a sparkle of white in there um, and anyway here's the mouse now um, I'm doing coffee and a little bit of brown and black watercolor for its kind of fur color. Um, so this is the cotton ball like I talked about. Um, it takes the color a little easier, but like I said, it just um, gives you a little bit more bright, transparent look. So um, you can kind of see what you like. And then like I said, I always add a little white to the eye area just um, because I think that helps bring the eye out a little bit. Um, so just adding a few more dabs of coffee. And then you ask, this is has dried a little bit and you can even see the back of the head. Can you see how the um, cotton is fluffed up? That's because I let it dry sitting on the back of its head. On a, I just put it on a tiny little plate, like just a regular, kind of side plate, um, you know, that you eat off of, um, like a salad plate or whatever you would call it. Um, and I just set that in the oven and let the, um, little drying cotton or drying paint, um, pieces sit on that. So I, yeah, I had a question and that's what they sit on. It's just a little plate, like what my watercolor is on. Um, if you can set them where they're having the least contact um, as possible like if the ear is dry I would set it on its side um, but if the ear is not dry I wouldn't set it there because then the ear will kind of smush as it's sitting there and drying um, so anyway I just showed you how you can kind of smooth out if you get a like kind of a flat spot or a spot where the cotton sticks to your plate as it's drying just go back in with a slightly damp um, gluey water 
mix and just kind of brush that down and it'll be fine. Um, and now I'm doing some little eyes. Mouse eyes, I think, are like the easiest and that is just because I make my mice small so the eye is small by default and then um, I don't, you know, if you look at like a rodent, well, I guess rabbits are rodents and their eyes are a little more <laughs> um, complex or different colored, but um, small rodents usually like mice and shrews and moles, like their eye is just very beady black, like it usually doesn't have multiple colors really that you can see, so I don't stress too much about their eyes, I just do a little black um kind of oval shape and then I just add usually one little spot of you know white for a sparkle um, and then I'm just doing a really light nose here with I think I'm using um, some brown darkish brown watercolor to do nose and mouth just little lines there which I'm sorry I didn't have it pointing the right way it's just really hard sometimes to um, actually paint something and have it um, facing the camera. So just adding some little details and I do add little pink um, cheeks and pink in the ears um, just I don't know to make it a little more quaint. So there's the little, little mouse if it'll come in focus there she is or he. And Oh, I'm adding a little bit more pink, it looks like. And all of this, like I said, will dry a little darker. So just keep that in mind. Try not to go too dark. Just think when it comes out, it will um, it will have gained some vibrancy when it's dry. So just adding a bit more coffee wash and then I'm just touching up um, where I thought the cotton was a little loose with a few dabs of glue okay he is ready to go back on his little plate okay so um, day two of this project I've got the cake frosted and chilling in the fridge um, so I'm back to finish up our toppers with you and make a little mini um, flag bunting that says eat cake. So um, I will show as much of that as I can and um, kind of talk through any parts that I don't think are necessary to share. But anyway, um, I don't have much time until Nettie's home um, from Grandma's. So we'll see if we can get this little project finished up. Okay, so um, here are the three little animals that I painted. Actually, I think I painted this mouse face. This is a little different. I would say this is more how I would make it for myself, but then I thought I'll make it one with bigger ears. It's a little bit more I don't know, cartoony. Um, so there's those that I painted with you and I will try to keep as much of that footage in there as I can. I tried to make the eyes pretty simple and I mean to be honest these are a little rougher probably as far as the texture um, and the paint job than maybe what I would typically <laughs> do if I wasn't filming and um, really rushing with Nettie's birthday coming up. Definitely if I was like making them to sell they would be a little bit more polished but um, again like it's okay sometimes to do stuff that isn't um, quite up to your usual standard. I think that's okay. Um, and then there's a donkey and a pig. <laughs> um, and so we will put their collars on with um, using some of our stash here and I'll show you you know I've got lots of lace and fabrics but if you don't have a lot to choose from I'm going to show you what just some like really light muslin type cheesecloth looks like and I think that will turn out fine and actually if you have um, a little paint you could um, 
you know, paint it pink or green or, you know, whatever. You could um, color that or dye it with just some paint. Um, you could also just actually, you know, dye it with avocado pits or something. So, you know, there's always, like, <laughs> lots of directions and extra things that you can do with any project. Um, a lot of this fabric, like, some of these were given to me by um, a person I know from France. Um, and some from a lady in Canada who's a really good friend. Um, and then I have a new... <laughs> I have a new this I don't know if this is actually like a chicken breed I have to look on the bottom and read but it's like a bird that was endangered in the UK that they tried to bring back and it looks like a cross between a pheasant and a chicken or something but anyway I have a new mug from a friend in Santa Fe who does so much for us um anyway uh that was my version of shout outs is just um thanking people who've sent me sweet things in the mail um so here's little pieces of fabric you could get a lot more creative and use a bunch of different fabrics or whatever but I just don't have enough time to um faff around with that today so they're all from the same and then I did cut some little letters out of um a kid's book which is it was a little, you know, it's like an easy or beginning reader, so the letters are a little bigger. But I do have um, one that I typed up on the typewriter that I paper mache a little bit and not as drying on the vent right now, so I'll show you that little thing later. Okay, so I was going to show you how to hot glue this, but I'm sure you can figure out how to hot glue the banner, I would just put a strip of hot glue right here and just fold it over the string like that, which is what I did in the past. But I just looked at this and I thought, well, let me see if I can um, sew it. And I had this kind of thicker cord on a needle from where I was binding a book. Um, really, I probably shouldn't have used this darning needle. Um, but so far the fabric seems to be able to handle it, but if you have something really delicate, like, um, this is fairly old fabric, but if you have something that kind of is, um, more like this, that might fall apart, you can see how thin that is. Um, I would use a smaller needle and smaller string. I think this weight of string will be kind of nice for not being quite so flimsy but we'll kind of I guess I'll just kind of see how it turns out but I'm just showing you that instead of hot gluing I'm I'm going away from the glue gun for this particular step and just actually sewing it which is um just as fast I would say so while I'm sewing a couple to show you I just forgot to mention that the way I attached the little letter is just um, with a little dab of hot glue. You can also use your school glue and just um, wait, you know, 20 or 30 minutes for it to dry. Um, that works fine too. It might um, kind of curl the fabric a little bit more than the hot glue does, but um, it works fine. And you can also do the bunting with paper. Okay. There's the eat cake banner. Um, I maybe should have left a little bit more string on this end for tying it around different things, but I think it's enough to probably get by. Um, seems like it worked fine with sewing, so, and it was just as fast and a lot less, um, picking glue gun, or picking dried glue off, so, and no using plastic, so that's, that's a win there if you've got thread and a needle you can probably do it that way okay so I'm just gonna do a couple of the collars for you some really simple ones and I won't show you every single one I do because some of them are very simple like tying a ribbon around um, the mouse's neck I didn't really think I needed to show you but I'm just using a little piece of crocheted lace um, I just kind of held it up to see about how much I would need um, to make it kind of the fullness that I wanted. And then I'm just using a bit of um, embroidery floss or embroidery thread and just um, doing a little running stitch through the top there. 
um, and just gathering it together. And then I just tie it off a little bit um, to make sure. And the necks are very small on mine. I think I like put a little um, text or caption in earlier saying that if I went back, I would probably make all the necks a little larger. So um, they were just a little, it was easier to, to do the collar around a little larger area because um, when it's just a tiny little toothpick or skewer size neck, um, you have to try to glue everything kind of in the same spot. So anyway, um, I, I glued stuff up as high on the neck as I could um, using my very messy hot glue gun there, just starting at the back. And then I just um, put a little more glue on the front of the neck. And then I will attach it in one more place at the back, obviously. And that's really all there is to it um, for the, I mean, lace and ribbon are the easiest and um, this part only takes just a few minutes. I mean, you could add embellishments. You could do a bow or ribbon with it too, um, but I didn't get too fancy. So there is bunny. I can't remember if I put a dab of, I must attach the, maybe. I think I might kind of glue that um, crocheted lace to itself. I'm just cutting off a little part that's kind of extra and frayed. Um, and then we'll see if I glue it together a little bit there. Never too much hot glue. Okay, there he is. And then we'll do a kitty, or pink kitty, with um, some little floral fabric scrap. I just tear it, so I leave the edges raw, and then I'm just folding it over. I've got my um, embroidery floss again and just a knot at the end, and then a running stitch to gather it together and um, I didn't show because obviously I <laughs> tried to keep these things under an hour um, but I'd used cheesecloth and I'll, I'll show photos still photos at the end but I used cheesecloth for like muslin cheesecloth for the um, pig head and then I just add I think I yeah I coffee stained it a little bit lightly and then I um, added a little bow to it or ribbon with it, you know, to kind of um, make it a little bit more interesting. But I thought it looked fine the way it was, just maybe not. Um, it's just not very flashy if it's not a color, but I'm, I'm kind of okay with sort of neutral colors. And I, w I was going to say, um, I think these would be really cute. Um, you'll see them on my daughter's cake at the end, which is not too long here, a couple minutes. Um, but I think these would be really cute for like topping a really simple, um, not decorated cake, you know, or tart or, um, or a pie because, um, you know, pies are kind of plain looking, especially if you make pie like me and you don't, um, pull out all the stops and, <laughs> and make, um, beautiful crusts. So these would kind of, I mean, I think they would lend themselves to a pie because um, they're kind of that neutral color anyway. But I mean, yours might be completely different looking than mine, but I just was thinking for mine, I might use them that way in the future. So yeah, I just attaching his little ruffled collar with hot glue again and just um, fussing around to see, um, you know, to try to get it kind of as natural looking as I can where the hot glue doesn't show. Um, and there she, Miss Kitty is. And then here's kind of our fashion show or whatever at the end. That's a little um, sign I made on toothpicks 
not my absolute favorite thing, but um, you could probably make something a lot cuter. Here's um, the little cartoony mouse, and he's just got a little piece of kind of ribbon trim. Um, and then that's just, you know, a piece of, I just had a small piece of leftover ribbon that I tied in a bow. I think that looks cute for the little mouse. Um, there's a bunny. I added a little flower on her head because I I wanted the banner or the bunting or whatever the flags to not quite um, not hang quite straight but be at a little angle so I attached this string around her ear just so that it, it would go up a little bit on her end you could also just push one of them in lower but anyway that's that's what I did and then I put a flower in front of the string there's Miss Kitty and then I I gave the donkey like a longer sort of I guess it would be like a dress with the collar not convinced I really like that super well but anyway that's supposed to look like our donkey true so she's true blue with her blue flower and there's my funny little smiling pig who's kind of my ode to Mabel even though it's not the same colors as her but Mabel has that little underbite smile so she, um, the pig has the cheesecloth and ribbon um, and there there we have our group of cake or pie toppers. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you have some ideas for things that you really are excited to make, and I wish you happy making.